assistant nurse manager here in the pediatric emergency department. Okay, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the mini lab. So we were talking, we were talking to Abbott Labs months before uh, COVID became uh, yes. a thing, became yes. an issue, and um, and then um, we started negotiations, and then administration was involved, and then there was a little bit of a delay, so that um, when COVID did hit full force. The lab wasn't up and the lab running. Was not up and running yet. It was in process, but it was not up and running yet. So uh, we probably got it, the lab opened up about November. It was around November of 2020. 2020. Um, when we finally got the machines in, the lab built the machines in, and we're ready to start. Okay. What do you think has been the impact on our pediatric emergency department uh, as far as patient throughput, oh, uh, safety, and all, been, all the it's ramifications? Been, uh, it's been amazing as far as our throughput. It's been amazing with our safety. What happens is now, when the patient comes into triage, if the patient is in any way symptomatic or has any type of potential exposures, um, they can be tested immediately upon entry in through the triage area, and they'll be tested in the mini lab. And at that point, we know now what type of room they need to be in. Does it need to be a private room? Does it need to be a closed off room? Can or a negative the pressure corner? room. If they're a negative pressure room, can they go into a general curtained area that we have if they're negative on all this. Um, so it's been able to help us place patients in the appropriate rooms that they need to be in depending on their status. How fast do these tests turn around? It takes approximately two minutes for the machines to warm up once you've turned them on. And then it takes anywhere between seven to 10 minutes for the actual test to run. So you're looking at about, you know, usually it's about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes from the time you turn the machine on to run a test to the time you get that result. Right. Now, I've heard the word 15 minutes, but it's like if it's, it's, if it's positive, yes. you'll know within five yes, yes. minutes usually. If it's, yeah, if it's a positive result, obviously it's not going to take the whole time for the machine right. to run a test. So it's right. Return, okay. a quick result. So do you think there's been an increased safety then as far as exposures? Yes. Oh, yes. The, the staff, it's an increased safety for staff, it's an increased safety for the other patients because we know where to place these, these positives. Um, it's an increased safety for ancillary workers, which is housekeeping, dietary, anybody that's in and out and through our unit because these patients can have been identified at the beginning when they come into the system, not later halfway through into the system. Um, so any kind of accidental exposures or unintentional exposures have been really negated yeah. Because these patients are known, what their status is known at the time they enter into the system. What do you think about patient satisfaction? Oh, the patient satisfaction? There is nothing happier than a mother who you can tell this patient, your child has this or your child doesn't have this. Uh, what we were having before is the test that took longer amount of time, so we were having to tell them, go home, quarantine, and we'll let you know. And that makes for a very anxious yeah. parents. Yeah, yeah, we'll let you know in 24, you know, one to two days, right. that sort of right. thing too. So absolutely. So uh, as physicians, we've been delighted with the fact that we've got data that we can operate on. I can tell my intern, don't go in that room until the test is back. And, and we've given the nurses complete freedom to, to, to put in the orders and, and just every new patient that is appropriate will be yes. tested. From a, from a physician's perspective, we feel like throughput is much faster because we're not waiting on the lab. Yes. And uh, so, so, you know, some ERs do have mini labs, probably they like they do the ice stats and things like that. And yes. that's very beneficial, but this is unique in that this is really a viral lab. Yes. And, and it's, it's unique in the context of this is COVID-19 pandemic time. And so that's what's kind of unique about this, our, the impact that we had in this very strange setting that we're living yes. in. Could you show us the mini lab and Absolutely. walk us through there? Absolutely. Okay, we'll follow you. All right, um, so our waiting area, if you look over here, this, this, this wall actually, the waiting area extended uh, all the way through. So we had this wall placed up and we took a section of our waiting room to create the actual mini lab area. Okay. Now, in addition though, besides the um, mini lab, we had actually also did a provider and triage, a pit area. Yes. And this yes. provider and triage area are two rooms actually, and again, it, it was serendipitous, but it actually turned out that we could yes. actually put we positive patients. We now as especially positive patients that are, have mild symptomatic, 
Um, they can be swabbed, placed over here. The result comes back as a positive. Instead of tracing them through the entire unit to yeah. be seen, the physician can come out here, yeah. see them, give the instructions that they're needed, and then we can be discharged from here. Right. All right, this is our mini lab area. We have the nine machines. We have nine Abbott machines. Uh, we've dedicated uh, four or five of them to do COVID. We started off thinking we were going to only dedicate two or three. I mean, we realized very quickly we needed more that were dedicated to that. Um, and then we have some that are dedicated to the influenza, flu AB, and strep, and RSV. Yeah, so, so what's been beautiful about this is that we just went through an RSV epidemic yes. too. And <laughs> yeah. so the, that, that is a, a, a double uh, icing on the cake, sort of, yes, to speak. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's been a, a very good, uh, it's been very beneficial for both an RSV epidemic as well as, yes. and, and it's a late epidemic. I mean, it started months after uh, normally where RSV happens. And yes. so we've had both a combination of the COVID-19 as well as RSV, and some patients have both, turn out to have both yes. tests positive. Yes. So when nursing started first doing this, was, mm -hmm. was there, what, what adjustments did you have to make? I mean, obviously it's like, hey, I'm trying to do nursing. Now you make me a right. lab a lab tech. So, how, how do you respond to that? What happened when, when we first started, um, one, of our, one of the nursing, one of our concerns nursing-wise was staffing. How are we gonna, how are we gonna do this logistically with the nursing staff that we had? And at first it actually was a little bit, it was a learning curve. Um, Cause what we found was that the nurses in the treatment area at the back of the emergency department had to leave that treatment area to come out here to run these tests for 10 minutes. So that was taking them 10 minutes that they were completely away from the bedside. Um, so then we said, okay, where's our peak hours? And we determined what our peak hours were and then we increased our staffing out here into the triage area. Um, to include a pit nurse that was dedicated to the pit, those two rooms that we saw, plus running the, the lab. So they, that nurse runs all the swabs, okay. even the ones that are collected out here in triage, as well as the ones that are collected in the back. Those nurses will now bring them okay. to the pit nurse, and she'll be stationed in here to run the test. So you're, we're not taking that nurse away from the bedside anymore. Was there a net increase in nurses, or you just redistributed? We, your... we re redistributed, and then we... Um, have on our agenda the higher I mean, we're in the process of hiring and an increasing staff okay to cover it okay but we, we just redistributed we thought outside the box on that yeah one. why not just let the lab do this right the, the this decreases this is it's all about time uh, and we could let the lab do it the lab has minimal they do not have as many machines as we have they only have two in the lab um they have a limited amount of lab personnel we were waiting extended length of time for these test results. I mean, we could wait an hour and a half uh, for a rapid for a RSV. Rapid, right. right. So this has literally cut the amount of time in half for our patients. Or more than half. For our physicians. Now, they, like you had said earlier, we know the status of the patient, so we know which direction or which pathway we're going to go. Um, and it has just cut down on so much dead time of waiting. There's not the wait anymore. Can, can you imagine what it would have been like when our volumes really took off again and the impact that um, if we had not had the, the mini lab, the viral mini lab, as I'll call it, um, can you imagine what the impact would have been on our waiting times? It would have, yeah, it would have been substantial. Um, before, when, when, they, when we first started uh, with the, the COVID and the first, when it first was introduced into our healthcare system, our throughput times were suffering, um, waiting on the length of time that it would take to get any kind of definitive test result. Um, so on this second even even when down, the volumes were down, even when the volumes were down. So when our volumes skyrocketed, uh, it we would have been at a standstill in the emergency department right. had we not had the mini lab. Right, the the whole system would probably have unraveled. We would have been at a standstill. Um, and it's also another thing that the mini lab has done, and I wanted to make sure everybody understood is it is it is greatly helped us and increased our ability to get patients from the outpatient ED setting to the inpatient or the surgery setting because we have the definitive uh, uh, result so that the inpatient setting and the surgery world can go ahead and get that patient transferred in a much faster manner. Okay, so what about false negative testing? Um, I mean, obviously we know that 
this particular testing is not like PCR testing. It's, right. Maybe the technology is different. But, but um, in general, we understand that very early in the disease or very late in the disease, this will be a false negative. Yes. Yes. And uh, truthfully, I probably don't care um, at that stage, except for, because they're probably not terribly infectious. But um, except for the fact that we do not want to know if they're positive or not. For those patients who have a valid exposure and we have a negative result, what are we doing? What we're doing with those patients is we're, of course, sending them home with instructions of quarantine regardless. Uh, if they're symptomatic and they're feeling bad with instructions, very clear instructions for the families um, and the parents to return. Um, we give them a discharge instruction sheet that's step-by-step -step of what to look for, what to return for. Um, but then we also are ordering- And then we're also ordering out the- The whole logic uh, test. Whole logic also and sending that just in case and getting their information so that we can call them back to let them know if there's a discrepancy in those results. How often do you think we're seeing a discrepancy? Um, it is not very often. It's it's a very small percentage of what we've done. Any of the discrepancies that occurred were not surprising because no. they had just been exposed, yes. and we knew that. And uh, we, but we just took that into account when we did yes. when we ran the test.